So recently, I found myself in front of an audience of uh, 200 marketing professionals. I was giving a presentation about how the future of presentation is going to look like, how we create presentations, how we build them. But before me was this great speaker. She used to be a member of a parliament in Finland. But nowadays, she had her own advertising agency. She was talking about how to brand people, how to build brand images of, around individuals. She used a lot of images. Her first image was what she considered to be the best branding message of all time. It was about Jesus Christ. This is a perfect brand for religion, for God, who could be unfair. But with Jesus, you would know that he would forgive sins. So, what followed after Jesus wasn't, well, you get to decide. He'll, he, he was talking about Martin Nukan and another, another iconic person in Finnish history, a ski jumper, who, uh, well, later on in uh, his career did something else as well. These sportsmen have this great karma around them. It's easy to brand them. But sometimes, as she was telling, it's hard to keep that brand positive. So, Tiger Woods. And uh, her message was that even the greatest brand can wear out. So, while she was delivering this presentation, I wasn't actually listening to her message. I was looking at the images she used. Just like the best presenters of this time, she was using not bullet points to read through to the audience, but images. We live in a very visual era where we use a lot of images in our communication. We use them in our blogs, we use in our, in them in our presentation, we use them in our reports. It's a very visual era. So I wanted to know where this great presenter was getting her images. So while she was delivering the presentation, I went online, went to Google to find out. Turns out that she had done exactly the same. Her images of Tiger Woods didn't come from her camera. They actually came from Google Images. So result number five, exactly the same image. When it came to Martin Nukanen, it was actually Barry. It was the first image that she used. So I bet that the Jesus didn't come from her heart. It came from Google as well. Now, there's, this is how people make presentations these days. But how many of you have ripped images or taken images from Google Images? Yeah, so I, I, I guess that's the usual way of doing business, usual way of creating presentations. So my claim is that it's not the Casas or uh, BitTorrents that are the biggest software, softwares or applications used to do piracy. It's actually the PowerPoints, the keynotes even our blogs, but nobody actually cares. So should we care? Of course we should. There's a certain irony in this story because this member of parliament, an ex-member of parliament, was actually among the group of people who were setting up a new copyright legislation in Finland. That copyright legislation made it actually a criminal to copy these images and publicly perform them in a commercial setting. Actually, this same legislation that she was setting up could, t could, could have taken her to a prison for two years. And it could probably take many of you guys too. Nobody cares. I think we should start caring. And it's not like we don't have alternatives. Creative Commons is a um, licensing system which was launched in 2001. It enables authors, it enables photographers, it enables composers, writers to tell other people that you're free to use my work as long as you respect some rights that I've set up. So, for example, uh, Wikimedia Commons alone has over 10 million images which are licensed either uh, with Creative Commons licenses or are in public domain. Or if you need more images, there's Flickr which holds 200 million 
Imagine that, 200 million photos which are licensed with Creative Commons licenses. So some of these licenses only require you to do the attribution, to give credit to the author. You can do whatever you want with the image. You can crop it, you can build upon it, you can use it, you can publicly perform it. No royalties have to be paid, but you have to give credit to the author. So how do you give credit to the author? Well, as I said, this is a legal, uh, it's, it's, it's a license, it's a legal document. And legal documents tend to look like this. This is the attribution clause in that five pages long license. So many of you who have uh, bumped into licenses like this feel pretty much like this after reading them. So in order to get the license, in order to not to infringe the license, you need to actually follow all the steps uh, describe this document. So, how do you do that? So let's take an example. I'm creating a presentation and I need to find an image of a kid. So first I would have to leave my PowerPoint software which I use to create these presentations. I would have to find a source where these images are, find a perfect image. This is where we jump in. So I found this image yesterday of, of, of a kid and it's licensed with Creative Commons license. I can use it as long as I tell who the author of the um, image was. And it's, first I would actually have to get it from Flickr which is somewhat difficult nowadays to my presentation. So here we are. Next I would find out the name of the author. That's something that the license requires. And copy that to my presentation. Then I would go up find the name of the image. And in this case, it's the IMG underscore 0374. So I'll attach that to my image, as, uh, my presentation as well. Next thing, there's a requirement to add the license terms so that other people who see my presentation would know that this is Creative Commons license. It's quite fair, I got it for free. I should let other people know that they can do it as well. So, on a Flickr page, there isn't actually a URL that's required to be put to on, the, uh, on my presentation, so I would have to follow the, uh, click the uh, Sunrise Reserved logo there, or link, and then copy that from there. This uh, person who's decided to share this image has also said that you can buy additional rights through Get Images. So it's actually there's additional rights available uh, and that the license requires you to add that information as well. So I, I would copy that information, put it on my slide, and then it would start looking like this. Now I wanted to, you can, you can pretty much see that half of the slide is now <laughs> goes to the uh, attribution. So I'm actually trying, will have to reduce the size of the image. So if I do that, it will be uh, con consider derivative work and I would have to also mention that I've used this uh, work in modified way. So that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. That took me a minute or two and I'm a kind of a professional. Imagine by the time you have a presentation which has 50 slides and you repeat this process going back and forward, back and forward, 50 times, you're starting to look like this. So people really don't want to infringe copyrights. They want to respect the licenses, and we're seeing a lot of people trying to do that online. It's just way too difficult. So that's why we were seeing in our research that people are failing the, in this. Even, even if they're trying, we did a survey with SlideShare. We went through their 50 featured presentation which had uh, views of tens of thousands. And uh, we examined how they used images. A lot of them, actually half of them used images from Google. We found a way to figure that out. 10 of those 50 used Creative Commons images. None of those 10 uh, presentations used the images correctly. 
There was even a presentation there which was advising people how to use Creative Commons licensed images. And even that failed in the attribution part. And the way that, that licenses are built is that even if you fail in one of these attribution things, you lose the license. The license is terminated. So you're actually infringing as much as you would if you took the images from Google Images. So people are failing, failing hardly. So imagine a world where this failing wouldn't be an option. Imagine if the software did this for you. Imagine if it would be easier to do things legally. To use images and not worry about attribution, not reading that five page license. So this is what we imagined. We got some help from our friends at Google through their Google Summer of Code project. So we designed a system that automates most of this, make sure that your presentation are created legally. So we created a software. This is a plugin for PowerPoint where you can actually we can actually let's go. Actually, actually, actually. We can do the searches without leaving the PowerPoint. You can search for images. It will go out and find images which are Creative Commons licensed. You can review them before, select the one that you really want, and attach that to your presentation. The software really takes care of the attribution part. It creates a slide to the end of the presentation. So every time you add an image to your presentation, it will do the attribution automatically. So who's interested? Who would like to use this kind of system? So every time I do this presentation, it, people come to ask, we're going to get this. So this would be the um, attribution slide of my presentation. I, I was using this to build this presentation. So as you can probably see, it's not quite ready. Actually, I might be infringing in this process as well. It's missing some of the key parts there. That's because it was created by a student and it's not quite done. So we have a uh, GitHub web page. You can help us to take this to a level where you can distribute it, where all, all of you could uh, start using it if you have some gifts in, uh, in software development. But we didn't stop here. We decided to look at videos. Videos are a special uh, media which unfortunately for amateurs have been really hard. So if you look at YouTube, there's two kind of videos. It's the one with the, with the talking head. The other one is with the um, uh, remix of professional content. Well, the third one is like uh, kind of like amateur videos of your uh, brother's wedding. But then there's a certain category of creativity which is shown there, which has demanded a lot of attention. So I started the presentation by talking about the visual age. This is a storytelling, it's a storytelling using audio, using music, and uh, combining that with visuals. And this presentation was created by tools which are not designed for that. It was created with Microsoft Paint and uh, Windows Movie Maker. So very rough tools. However, with those tools, this person, this individual, this amateur, managed to create 11 million views. So that's a lot of demand. People like this, and they've created even more videos uh, which uh, mimic 
the message that made in this uh, video. So we actually need tools for people. It's not just access to the media, it's tools to modify them. So we decided that, okay, so we might figured a way to do this with PowerPoint, with presentations. Can we do this same with video? And we did. This is a uh, software we created a year ago. Code monkey, get up, get coffee. It's a web service. Code monkey, go to job. Code monkey, have boring meeting. Boring ma manager As you can see, there's a video playing, a music playing in the background. At the same time, the user can insert tag words. And we match those tag words with matching images. So this is a real-time video creating system. So as, as, as an end result, you would get a timeline which would include all these images that match your message. It doesn't have to be a music video, it can be also a presentation. We're using it for a coursework here. And uh, you can easily modify the images, change them. You can replace the keywords you've set, you can uh, tweak the timings there. The point being that this idea of using visuals in our daily communication is part of our visual era. We as a users, we need to demand that from our software. We don't want to go back and forward, back and forward, or risk the infringement. We want software that does that for us, that automates that, that help us to make it legal. We as a designers, we have to take these lessons and you, we can actually integrate them in most of the creative software. Because this is what people in the creative era demand and this is what we owe them and this is what we should give them. <laughs>